The following is a local resident producer's program. The program content is the sole responsibility of the producer and does not necessarily reflect the views or policies of CATV2, Oshkosh Community Media Services, the City of Oshkosh, or Time Warner Cable. Hi everybody, welcome to Ayan Oshkosh, Cheryl Hens here and uh, very pleased this evening to be joined by a guest who's a first timer on the show but her, hopefully it won't be her last. Um, she is Doctor of Audiology Juliet Sturkins. Uh, she's an audiologist with the Fox Valley Hearing Center. I am. Okay. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit tonight about um, hearing loss uh, in general and then something called a hearing loop that um, Juliet is very involved in and in trying to get into a variety of venues uh, throughout Winnebago County and so forth and uh, so we're gonna uh, talk about that and um, we'll have a little audio clip a little bit later on and I want to thank um, County Board Supervisor uh, Mike Norton for sending me an email bringing this to my attention because I didn't I've heard about the loops but I hadn't heard about you and your cause so well um, let's get let's get you in the loop that's so right <laughs> that's right well Mike helped to get me in the loop so anyway thank you to Mike uh, for for um, hooking us up tonight so All right. um, and I appreciate your coming in um, especially since this is now the start of the holiday season and people have a lot of things to do so um, let's talk about hearing loss in general mm -hmm. um, okay. it, it's a horrible thing of course when you start losing your hearing. Do you have any kind of statistics on how many people in Wisconsin or have in, hearing loss? Yeah, or in Winnebago County alone? And, and let me get back when you said it's a horrible thing when you think you're going to be losing your hearing. Most people who are losing their hearing don't know it. It's everybody else around them who'll go, Dad, you know, you're not hearing like you used mm -hmm. to. And the, the comment is, I hear okay if you would just quit mumbling. Or yeah. if you would just speak up, mm -hmm. I would hear you just fine. Is, that, is it because it's a denial thing, or, or do they just truly not you know? know? It's like losing your eyesight. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know when that you're losing your eyesight until your arms get too short. But in between, <laughs> you kind of accommodate for that. So hearing loss happens, as a rule, very gradually. The, the people for whom hearing loss happens suddenly, they're in the office the very next day. Mm -hmm. But if they lose it very gradually because of their age or because it's a family history um, or because they're exposed to noise, they, um, they lose their hearing. And the statistics right now, we estimate about one out of every 10 people has hearing loss. Wow. One out of every 10. Men are a little bit more affected than women. So it's about 60, 40, 60% 60 men, 40% mm -hmm. women. That, that percentage is higher because they do more work in noise. They have, um, um, they have the noisy hobbies, the trap shooting and the skeet mm -hmm. shooting. And this is Wisconsin. I call it the Wisconsin hearing loss. Yeah. And um, genetically, they are more predisposed to hearing loss. So I, uh, more men than women. Okay. Um, it's very gradual, doesn't happen overnight. And so the first thing to go when you lose your hearing, everything you hear starts to become a little bit more mumbled, a little bit more muffled. Okay. It sounds like um, people are not talking distinctly. And I'd be happy to demonstrate it for the listeners when I cover up the microphone. I'm sure Mike in the back right now thinks, what's happening with my mic? <laughs> <laughs> but it muffles the sound, so yeah. you can still hear the sound, but it's not plain. It's mm -hmm. not clear. Okay. 
All right. And you said it, it happens gradually in, in just about all cases where, where people have this gradual hearing loss. Um, what, are, what are the typical symptoms? Uh, I mean, I would say if people start cranking up the TV louder and cranking louder. Cranking up the TV that's one louder, for sure. asking people to repeat, uh, complaining of ringing or buzzing in their ears. Okay. Sometimes they say, my ears feel plugged or stuffed. And strangely enough, some people complain that when sound gets too loud, it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And then hmm. the, the biggest complaint of all is that there is a disproportionate um, amount of trouble in background of noise. Okay. So I hear just fine face to face, one on one, but I go into um, a crowd or I go into Fratello's or a restaurant and I have trouble hearing. And so for, you know, I've been here 27 years, I moved here from Holland, and in those 27 years I have worked very hard to try and make my patients hear as best as they can. Mm -hmm. You know, and we do that. There's a couple of different solutions. If you have the type of hearing loss that can be helped with surgery, you need to see a physician. And in some cases, surgery can benefit hearing, but only in about 5% of the cases. Okay. So the other 95%, the only type of benefit, the only type of help there is, is through the use of a hearing aid mm -hmm. or use of hearing aids. And so I fit hearing aids, and hearing aids have made a remarkable improvement in the last 27 years, mm -hmm. you know, since President mm -hmm. Reagan got his hearing aid in the early 80s. Um, I'm very confident that hearing aids work significantly better in quiet, but also in background of noise. I can hear people, make people hear across the table um, in a restaurant, but, and here's the but, the hearing aids um, in large areas in large auditoria or large meeting rooms or um, a theater or a convention center where there's distance involved, where there is some background noise involved. Um, and the hearing aid just is not capable of picking up the sound. That's the same thing as my moving the microphone away from my mouth. If I put the microphone back, in most cases, you're going to hear the audio improve significantly. Mm -hmm. So hearing aids work well in a fairly normal, what I call hearing bubble, you know, sure. around the table. Um, but if you're trying to understand in a place where there is a lot of background noise or where there is distance involved, the hearing aids have their limitations. Sure. It's as simple as that. They're hearing aids. They're not like getting your own ears yeah. back. And there seems to be a stigma for some people about wearing a hearing aid, and I'm sure you see it day in and day out in your business. Um, you know, I'm dealing with, with a couple of folks right now who um, one just simply doesn't want to wear the hearing aids at all, claims they don't work. Um, you know, and constantly running back to the to the doctor, you know, checking the batteries, checking this, checking that, and another one who just does not want to recognize that there's a hearing problem, yeah. and yet yeah. I keep seeing that TV get turned up louder Our, and louder uh, and louder. And they the have no trouble. Like, turn that down. You know, when I go over there, it's like turn it down. What's why do you have it up so loud? I, I have to tell you this <laughs> joke. It, Indeed, I had some couple in my office one time and I said, do you have any trouble hearing the TV? And the gentleman said, no, I have no trouble. And the wife sitting right next to him says, and no, and neither does the whole neighborhood. Th there you go. See, that's it right there. Um, <laughs> and maybe even the next county. And so, you know? and, and so in these 27 years, the hearing aids have improved. But where the hearing aid fails is in that larger place or they'll go to church where they really want to use the hearing aid or they go to the Grand Opera House where they really would like to see their grandkids in a play mm -hmm. and they have trouble hearing in church. And they say, well, you know, this hearing aid doesn't work. When I go to St. Mary's and I go, but I have trouble at St. Mary's or I have trouble at First Presbyterian in Nina because there is some reverberation there. Mm -hmm. And um, so really what has happened about two years ago, I was at a meeting, I was at a lecture uh, let me back up. What has been done in this country is to have what are called FM systems installed in churches. And FM systems l are small little devices that pick up the audio from the church microphone and bring the sound wirelessly to this little receiver and to the user's ears. But before the service starts, you have to pick this up. Mm -hmm. You have to take your own hearing aids out. You have to put this little device in the ear. Sometimes there's a big 
your phone and you're sitting in church with this type of device in your ear and a lot of my clients don't use them. They don't want to look different. It's a hassle. It's only in church. It's only a couple hours. You know, I'm not going to do that. And um, about two years ago, I attended a lecture from somebody from Western Michigan. And he was talking about hearing loops. And I'm interested in hearing loops because they were available in the Netherlands over 25, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. They were already in churches at that time. And I heard this gentleman speak. And he's explaining how he's been able to motivate churches and meeting places and auditoria to put these hearing loop systems in. And I'm sitting in the back of this room and I'm listening to this man talk and he's talking about 400 churches and places that have these loops. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking the only reason this is not happening is because I'm not doing this in Oshkosh. Well, there you go, and you took it on as your personal mission. And, yep. and we want to definitely talk about the loops, and before we get into that, um, you know, if, if someone has a loved one who's, who's definitely exhibiting some of these signs, yep. you know, it, it's a proud thing, you know. We don't want to admit that we've got yep. something going on with our hearing or our eyesight or whatever. Um, what's the best way to really approach a loved one uh, about the fact that there may be a hearing loss? The best time is to talk about it when you're not having an argument mm -hmm. um, because it's so often that people misunderstand what was said. Well, you only hear what you want to hear, and if you only get a hearing aid, then you, know, you want to talk about this and say, listen, I've known you for 30 years. I've known you for 40 years. I've been married to you for 60 mm -hmm. years, and you know what? You're not hearing like you used to, mm -hmm. and why don't we make an appointment? get your hearing tested, and I recommend either that, that, that you first consult with your physician, your primary physician, um, and generally that physician will then refer you to an audiologist to have a complete diagnostic hearing evaluation. Because I need to rule out, um, is, there, is there a condition that can be helped through surgery, like we were talking about earlier? Mm -hmm. Is there a medical condition that requires medical treatment? And if a hearing aid is going to work, what kind or what type of hearing aid is going to work? And the kind and the type of hearing aid depends on how, you know, the anatomy of the ear, how much room you have in an ear canal, um, how much room you have behind your ear, and your needs and your wants and your ability to handle. Because, you know, hearing aids can come in small and a little bit larger packages. Mm -hmm. Well, it, they have made improvements. They, they're, all, they're all different kinds of styles out there. Yeah. And I have to tell you, maybe you've even seen this. I kind of got a kick out of it because Lee Majors, who back in the, what, 70s or 80s, was the $6 million man. Yep. And now I see he's on TV. I haven't seen it often, but I've seen it a couple of times. He's on TV doing an infomercial for a hearing aid. Have you seen that? I have not. I have not. Hopefully, seen they his. don't cost six million dollars. <laughs> no, but, they um, don't. They you know, don't. I don't know what's so special, and I think it's even got his name on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not so um, sure what's you know, special the, about it. But. I guess it, my recommendation would be to consult with an audiologist, mm -hmm. um, get all the different recommendations, and hearing aids come definitely in different levels of technology. Okay. So you want to be informed not only about the size and the style of the hearing aid, but a little bit about what's under the hood of mm -hmm. the hearing aid. What kind of computer chip is in this hearing aid? And so some of the hearing aids have significantly improved noise reduction. They have directionality. So if, you, if it's quiet, the hearing aid will pick up you know, 360 degrees. But if it's noisy, the hearing aid literally kind of focuses in on the sounds that are coming from a particular direction. Hmm. And there's now some new devices coming on the market that through the use of a little gateway device can pick up sounds from cell phones, okay. direct from television, um, from your laptop. And so now suddenly this hearing instrument becomes a device that, you know, improves in all different situations. Um, so, and, and of course that comes with different price tags. Sure, so you need sure. to kind of look into this and then also find out whether your insurance will cover hearing aids. And in some instances, there may be a benefit. And we're finding that some people have benefits of 500 or or $1,000 towards the purchase of a hearing aid. 
unfortunately, Medicare frequently, specifically excludes hearing aids, hmm. just like they don't cover eyeglasses yeah. or dental work. Well, yeah. that's kind of a shame because, I mean, you really need to be able to hear things in life, yeah. you know. It, it's it, not like it's a a pleasurable thing that we just want to have, no. we need to have it, no. you know. No, and and although we associate the incidence of hearing loss to be greater with age, more than half of all the people with hearing loss are under the age of 65. Mm -hmm. So today I saw somebody who's in his 30s, runs mm -hmm. a business, and his girlfriend basically was telling him, we're not leaving this office until you've ordered something. Wow. We okay. want you to hear better. Yeah. And they've decided that this is their Christmas gift to each other. I think that's just that's an amazing wonderful. story. Yeah. Now these hearing loops that you were talking about, um, You've got a uh, audio clip that you brought, and um, it uh, it is just strictly audio, um, so you'll have to look at us while, while this is playing. <laughs> um, but the first part of it, I'll just kind of set this up. The first part is it runs about thirty seconds, yep. and um, it's hearing without a loop. With, and it's as if you had one microphone in the ear mm -hmm. and you're hearing the audio coming straight from the speakers in an empty church. This okay. is taken at St. Mary's and there is no there is no other people who are there to maybe absorb the sound, but you're going to hear the sound as if it were coming directly into the microphone with all the reverb reverberation that's in that church. Okay. And there is a lot because it's a very large church yes, and the acoustics church. are great, but yeah. you know, it is it is very large. And then immediately after that it goes into what that same verbiage would sound like with a with hearing a loop. loop. With a loop. And uh, then we'll talk about loops and what they are and so forth. So why don't we go ahead and and uh, play that audio clip? of Lars Maxfield. His aunt came all the way from Germany with her husband and the godfather. And we have family from Minnesota and from Wisconsin visiting here. We are gathered at the St. Mary's site of the Most Blessed Sacrament Parish in Oshkosh. Thank you all for coming. Buddy. Good morning, everybody. We are so glad you were able to make it here today to celebrate the occasion of the baptism of our son, Lars Maxfield. We have his godmother and godfather here visiting from quite a ways away, and we're gathered at St. Mary's, the Catholic Church of the Most Blessed Sacrament here in Oshkosh. And St. Mary's has quite a bit of reverberation. Wow, the, and, the and difference we have good is ears. amazing. Yeah. We have good ears. Yeah. So you have to remember that the person with the hearing aid, even with the hearing aids in, there is still some um, disability that remains even mm -hmm. with hearing aids. And so what they hear is muffled. And I frequently do this because it sounds as if people hear like through a fog, it's not plain. And so what this hearing loop does, the hearing loop takes the audio feed, the sound that's from the microphone on the lectern or on the pulpit, and feeds it through an amplifier, through a wire, hence the word loop. It's basically a looped wire that loops around the sanctuary in the church. And that creates a magnetic field in the church. And that magnetic field gets picked up by something called a telecoil inside a hearing aid. Okay. And it's this coil that literally serves as an antenna, little antenna inside the hearing aid. And now the instrument becomes a speaker for the PA system. So there's the sound directly into the ear of the user. And why is it, why is it called a telecoil? Because about 60, 70 years ago, that telecoil was used for telephone. Okay. For telephone. Right. So it's called a teleswitch, telecoil, telecoil switch. But it's essentially a tightly coiled wire. It looks mm -hmm. like a little spool. And they're tiny. I mean, you, you can barely see them. They fit right into the hearing aid. And you activate that coil by pushing on a button on the okay. instrument. Or you push on a remote. So the um, hearing loop 
must work in conjunction with someone's hearing aids. Correct. It's not going to be something that takes the place of a hearing aid. Correct. And Correct. if someone doesn't have a hearing aid, are there, um, you know, is there some other type of yes. system in place? Yes, good question. Um, Emmanuel um, United Church of Christ, they just installed the hearing loop. And there are a couple of members who don't use hearing aids. Perhaps they should, but at this point they don't. So the church purchased listening devices. Okay. They look like a pack of cigarettes. I should have brought one. Look like a little pack of cigarettes. They have a, a coil built inside. And so during the service, they put the earbuds in their ears and they've got control over the volume and that takes place of a hearing aid. So a loop serves people without hearing aids as well as people with hearing aids. Okay, all right. Now, you do need to know that not every hearing aid comes with a T-coil okay. um, or telecoil. Um, about 62% of all hearing aids currently come equipped with that T-coil. Okay. Um, generally, the slightly larger hearing aids have the T-coil built in. Um, that means some, you know, 35, 38% of the hearing aids don't have T-coils, but there's a lot of people out there who own hearing aids and they have the T-coil, but they don't know they have it. Right. They may, and so, you know, you may say, well, how do you know that there's a T-coil? Is that question burning on your lips? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, what you do, you look at the hearing aid. You have this hearing aid in your hand, and if there's a button on the hearing aid that needs pu that can be pushed, but nothing is happening, it just may need to be activated. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, you know, getting these, I, I, I know several churches, including my own, have the hearing loop, and yeah. I think we've also got some other listening devices, like you were mentioning. Yeah. But, um, you know, you're trying to get this in a lot of different venues, not just churches in the no. Oshkosh area. No. Like, where else are you trying? You mentioned the Grand earlier. The Grand. The Grand just had a loop installed okay. during the renovation. The Oshkosh Convention Center has a loop. I mean, and, and I've been there. I've gotten feedback from clients who say, I was at the Grand for a meeting and I pushed a button and there was the sound. I could hear just beautifully. Um, the Performing Arts Center in Appleton, I'm working on that. Alberta Kimball, there is some. I was gonna um, ask you about that. That's a great, where do grandparents go? Where do parents go who want to hear their mm -hmm. kids in place? I see significant people with kids in schools. Um, so the grand, the, the Alberta Kimball, um, Meeting rooms, Mercy Medical Center has a loop. Um, there's a couple of churches now. Uh, Martin Luther is looking into it, the Presbyterian in Nina. They're going to put a loop in their Bible study room, in their gathering room. Okay. Because, you know, where do they gather? Where do they maybe watch videos or have meetings? Sure. What's yeah. involved, really, um, Juliet, in, in getting this loop system installed? Installed. Uh, and, and is there a cost? I'm sure that there's, there's a, a cost, cost to it, but you know, is it cost prohibitive? In my opinion, it's not. Um, obviously, by law, under the ADA, there is a requirement for public places with fixed seating to have accommodations for people who have difficulty walking. You know, it's mm -hmm. not any different than installing a wheelchair ramp or an elevator. Um, so places like the Grand, by law, are required to make themselves accessible, but churches want to make themselves accessible. You know, you want to hear. You go there 50 or 60 times a year. And so my push has been in churches because that's where um, the acceptance has been the easiest. Mm -hmm. um, it, what's involved is a site visit. Um, what needs to be done is a measurement of the noise level, magnetic noise level. If you, if there is electrical noise in the building, that needs to be addressed. Um, it needs to be looked at how large the venue is. You know how big this loop needs to be, and that the size determines the type of the size of amplifier. Mm -hmm. How hard is it to hide the wire? And I'll give you an example. There's a loop installed at St. Gabriel's Church in Nina, but they don't have a basement. They have tile floor on a cement slab. They've had to install the wire in the grout. So the grout okay. had to be cut open, the wire installed, re-grouted. There's quite a bit of labor involved, mm -hmm. and that's what made the price of the loop. 
more costly. Okay. Um, so just to give you an idea of expense involved, most churches are seeing loop expenses between three and four, five, six thousand dollars. St. Gabe's was more than double sure. because of that. Um, the Grand Opera House, I think that loop installation was around fifteen thousand. Um, but the Performing Arts Center, we're talking about real money. Yeah. And we're talking about significant, you know, it could be seventy, could be eighty thousand dollars. Wow. What do you think the elevators have cost in that building? I, I'm sure they've cost a lot. The elevators anywhere cost a lot of money. Yeah. You know, and, and when you think about hearing and, and loops and you look at something as beautiful as, as the PAC is in, in Appleton and their acoustics are so wonderful as it is, just like the Grand, yeah. you know, you think, wow, you know, do they really need a loop? But when someone can't hear, it's exactly the right. acoustics are lost on them. Yeah. The acoustics yeah. are lost. And the same with, with the Grand or at uh, Martin Luther when they're singing beautiful sounds. St. Mary's, wonderful singing. The mm -hmm. Episcopal Church, uh, Trinity, wonderful for sound. But if you're going to go to the carols and lessons where the chamber singers will be singing and then they do readings in the church, you know, you can have that hearing aid set so you'll be able to hear the lessons beautifully coming from the lectern right through the microphone. And in your hearing aid, you have your microphone turned on. You can mm -hmm. have a combination. So yeah. you can have the combination telecoil and microphone. You'll be able to hear the music, hear the lectures. It makes a huge difference. And I hear it time and time again. People say, I could hear every word. I understood every word. It's like the voice is right in my head. Mm -hmm. So you know, my mission, of course, is to get this symbol, this hearing loop logo everywhere. Um, because it means that people with hearing aids in some instances hear better than people without hearing aids. And that's kind of, you know, I'm working on the state level, um, I'm working on the national level on this, I'm really trying hard um, to make this logo appear everywhere. And are you working on this by yourself, or are there other people? Yeah, yeah you're grimacing. I, I I'm think working the answer very is hard. Yes. <laughs> yes. No. Um, you know what? In the, in the Fox Valley, I've gotten a lot of support from audiologists, mm -hmm. and so the audiologists in this area know what I'm working on. I've emailed with them. I've spoken to them. I've been to their state convention, um, and they now too are informing their clients. You know, you have choices. You can get a hearing aid that's a little bit smaller. Yes, it's a little bit more discreet. But if you get a hearing aid with a T-coil, you'll be able to hear in places where even people with good ears sometimes have trouble hearing. Mm -hmm. um, I just got an email from a gal here in Oshkosh. She went to the grant for Leon Redbone. <laughs> she said, I heard every word that he sang at the grant because his voice came right into her hearing aids. So um, it makes the hearing aid so much more beneficial. So yes, am I working on this? I'm the advocacy person, that's me. Um, I have reached out to audio companies. There are several audio companies in the state that are now doing hearing loop installations. My husband retired from Oshkosh Truck, you know, full disclosure here. He retired from Oshkosh Truck to install hearing loops because there was nobody installing loop systems. Hmm. And there is a fair amount of engineering involved and there's a learning curve involved. Um, but there's a company in Kakana that has done the loop installation at the Grand. They're going to be installing the loops at UW Oshkosh. UW oh. Oshkosh is getting loop systems. Um, they are working with the Performing Arts Center. And so these audio companies are now realizing that these loop systems make hearing aid users very happy. Sure, sure. Yeah. And so walk us through um, just kind of a timetable, if you would, as far as someone calls and they're interested in perhaps doing this. And by the way, we've been putting up the website, um, you know, for the, for the okay. loop. Um, but it, they can also, I'm sure, if they're interested in having a site visit done or finding out more information, yep. they can contact you directly? Yep, they can contact me directly. Okay. And um, if it's in the Fox Valley, generally, you know, I'll, we'll be happy to come out to do a loop survey, mm -hmm. is what it's called. 
but I've gotten requests from Kiel and Manitowoc and Green Bay and you Cedarburg. You running all over the state. And I said, there's no way. We can go out there. We can't provide good service, but you also need to work through a company that's local. So if there's a company in Cedarburg or in that area installing loops and they realize it's good for one church, maybe that company will also install loops in other churches. So my, my mission is to kind of bring audio companies with audiologists and the users and the churches all together. All together. Okay. All right. So yep. from the time someone makes the call, either to you or to someone else, to find out how to proceed with getting a loop installed until the time it's actually installed, installed. I, how much time I, can I'm that guessing take? about three, four weeks. Oh, that's Three, four very weeks. fast. Yeah. Okay. The, 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 the hard work is really in installing the wire and hiding the wire and knowing where to put the wire. Mm -hmm. um, and th th we're working with a church right now in Nina, the uh, Methodist church in Nina. And there was a little bit of m noise in the building, and it had to do with a bad ground grounding. I'm no uh, electrical engineer, but, you know, <laughs> any electrician could tell you there was a bad ground. Anyway, they've got that taken care of, and now we're going to be moving in to put a loop in. And the loop can literally be up and running in, in a week's time. Wow. That, so that it's going to really, be up really for fast. Christmas. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, good. It's very that's cool. good. Um, what else uh, do you think that people need to know about loops? or hearing aids. Uh, we've got about two and a half minutes left. So, um, you know, if you want to cover hearing aids some more, or if you, if there's something um, else about the loops that you think people should know. You know, and maybe talk a little bit about hearing aids and, and expectations about the holidays when people, mm. when they're going to visit grandma, yeah. grandma wears a hearing aid, or they're going to visit a father or a mother or an uncle who wears hearing aids. When you wear hearing aids, um, I call it the one, two, three rule. Number one, you as the speaker, get my attention. If I'm the one who wears the hearing aid, say, hey, Juliet, and I'll go, yeah. Well, now you got my attention. <laughs> now I'm listening. And then um, you want to make sure that you talk to me. You know, look at me. Don't talk until you can see the whites of each other's eyes is my rule. You know, you can talk around the corner, but it should be help. I need your help, but it should not be major conversation. And number three, try reduce the background noise. So if you're going to have conversation and you've got noisy little kids around the Christmas table, you know, maybe move them to an area where they're not making a lot of noise or where you can close the door, put them in front of the TV, and then visit around the table. Okay. Keep the conversation one at a time. You know, if one person speaks at a time, it's going to be a lot easier for that person with hearing loss to follow the conversation and be in the middle of it and occasionally rephrase. You know, we're talking about John. Remember, John, he was in the hospital. He just had a new knee. Oh, yeah. And then the person is back in the conversation so that it just kind of makes it all work a little bit smoother and recognize that after a long conversation or a stressful day, the hearing, the person with the hearing impairment is stressed. It's been a busy day. And at the end of the day, they're not going to hear as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just kind of recognize that maybe a timeout or listening to some Christmas music, but just kind of, you know, keeping it a little bit on a lower key. Um, but recognize that even with the best of hearing aids, if there's five people talking at the same time, hey, it's hard for me to hear. Yeah, you know? yeah we've all been there. So. And, and just real quickly, uh, for people who have a hearing impairment and they're talking on the phone, there are also things out there for them. Uh, Absolutely. And we've seen more and more of them being advertised on TV. Um, it, it's a system. Basically, it's a closed captioning kind of thing. Yes, yes. You know? and they work very well, and certainly they can contact my office at Fox Valley Hearing Center. Um, there is even a state program that allows for amplified telephones paid through with some state funding through a called a TEP grant. Um, so you, you can get an amplified telephone. The caption telephones are very reasonably priced and they work remarkably well. You, you not only hear the sound amplified, but the text will be put in captions right on the screen. And that brings up one more thing. Um, when you have somebody in the household that's having trouble hearing over the holidays, 
consider turning the captions on the television because the closed captions kind of help when you're watching a movie you'll be able to follow along and to read along it makes it a lot easier okay excellent thank you so much and good luck with your mission and thank you we for hope having to have you me back on yeah, again thank you so very much you just sit tight we're going to take a real short break when we come back we will be talking about neighborhood watch programs so we'll be right back Every year, the U.S. Department of the Treasury receives about 1.4 million reports of problems with paper checks. Checks can be lost, stolen, or delayed. If you still receive Social Security payments by paper check, Treasury wants you to know about a safer, more convenient way to get your money. The Direct Express Prepaid Debit MasterCard. The Direct Express card is new and is available to anyone receiving Social Security benefits, even if you don't have a bank account. Your monthly benefits will be automatically placed onto your card account each month on the day your money is due. While other debit cards cost money, it is possible to use the Direct Express card for free to make purchases, pay bills, and get cash at thousands of locations nationwide. There are no sign-up or monthly account fees. No more waiting for the mail or worrying about lost or stolen checks. Call 1-877-212-9991 or visit www.usdirectexpress.com. Welcome back to the second half of Ayan Oshkosh, and uh, very happy to be joined now by Thatcher Peterson. Thatcher is the president of the Oshkosh Neighborhood Watch Executive Board, and uh, we're going to be talking. Uh, this is new management, basically, if you will. It is a new Watch management program. back in May and April. Uh, Sergeant Joe Nichols got people involved in Neighborhood Watch together and said, Why don't you residents take ownership of this program? So, uh, we did. And you are the lucky guy and headed up to take care of it. I am the lucky guy headed up to be the president <laughs> of the organization. Uh, and we have a very strong executive board. We have been meeting since May to figure out exactly what it is we are about. Okay. And we've gone through a fascinating process to ask the fundamental questions of what does it mean to have a good neighborhood? What, do we, what should our mission be? And after a lot of discussion, we uh, concluded that the mission of Oshkosh Neighborhood Watch is making neighborhoods better. Okay. And Not just safer, but better. Making neighborhoods better. Okay. And our values as we looked at it all kind of fall into three categories that are obvious once you say it, but it takes time to get there. Our values are that Better neighborhoods happen when neighbors know each other, homes are well maintained, and when neighborhoods are safe. Now we're very fortunate in Oshkosh because we have safe neighborhoods everywhere. You now you can walk any place in this city day or night and mm -hmm. be safe. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, the meteorite might hit you, but fundamentally you're safe. So the real focus is getting neighbors connected with each other so they know each other and then making sure the houses are properly maintained. Okay. All right. So you had, um, you know, a couple weeks ago, uh, as we're taping this, you did a presentation. It was your annual meeting, um, and uh, citizens were invited to that. Um, I was unable to be there because I was actually taping this show. But, um, uh, you know, how was the turnout? The, uh, we have four citywide meetings a year. Okay. Uh, 
and this was one of them at this meeting. We had about 50 people all told, probably uh, 40 residents, uh, 10 police officers uh, from all seven police districts okay. in the city. And we went through as an executive board and I gave this presentation on uh, the work we've done so far. Sure. Uh, and then after that fairly brief presentation, everybody pooled around one of their districts and started asking and answering the questions, what do we want for our neighborhoods? What are we willing to do? Uh, where do we go in the future? Are we willing to put work into this effort? Uh, and so that's right where we are today. We have a lot of work to do in the future but that's where we are right sure. now. And Thatcher, what were some of the, the answers to those questions that people were saying? Like, what do they want in their neighborhoods? Uh, you know, I mean, you know, I miss the days when neighbors knew each other and they associated with each other. I, I miss those days and mm -hmm. you don't see that anymore a whole lot. You still do in some places and I, I envy those people who have those kinds of neighborhoods. Um, you know, I don't know what has happened over a period of time if we've just gotten so busy with our lives um, that we don't have time to get to know neighbors or exactly what it is. But that's one thing that I would like to see in a neighborhood is, is people who know each other. And, you know, you don't have to party down uh, every weekend with each other, but you're friendly and you watch out for each other. And that's the whole premise of a neighborhood watch program, isn't it? Well, it's the whole premise of neighborhood watch. And... Uh, it is a whole premise of the Neighbor Works program okay. that you remember the City Council approved mm -hmm. a week or two ago. Yes. And that whole program is in the pot process of getting itself going. Uh, but the fundamental core in, in both the Neighborhood Watch idea as our executive board has worked through the logic of it and with Neighbor Works also is that everything valuable happens on the neighborhood level. Okay. Practically yep. speaking, it means it's what is your block doing. Mm -hmm. And the role of a block captain, as we see it, is to be the, we described it as the spark plug or the host that gets the neighbors together to get the neighborhood, the neighbors talking about what they want for their particular block. Sure. And that will vary depending on where you live in the city. Uh, if you drive around the city, you see um, lots of pockets of different kinds of neighborhoods, mm -hmm. all within the neighborhood. On the south side, you can go to one location and it's different than if you go to another just a few blocks away. Yep. And I think that's great. That's what makes Oshkosh such a great place to live. Sure. Uh, having said that, it means that neighbors have to decide what they want their neighborhood to be. One of the very interesting uh, uh, concepts that uh, David Belke from NeighborWorks uh, uh, told us at the November 11 uh, meeting, and David Belke is probably as knowledgeable as anybody in the United States about neighborhoods and increasing neighborhood values. And what he said is that there are three really bad things for the value of your house. The first is one of these utility pressure treated wood porches, mm -hmm. you know, the green lumber that you see slapped on houses. That lowers the value of your own house if you put it on. It also lowers the value of your neighbor's house. Mm -hmm. The second thing he said is one way streets will lower the value of the neighborhood. And the third thing is that if there is a distressed house on your block, a house that needs painting, a house that has a pressure treated porch on it, mm -hmm. a house that's unkempt and uncared for, that drags down the value of your property. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are all kind of simple, obvious, once you say them, sure. uh, uh, things uh, that as a, uh, well, part of having well-maintained property is you don't have pressure-treated porches. You ask the city to do something about your one-way street. And if there's a dress, distressed house on the block, then you've got to figure out for your own protection, mm -hmm. uh, how do we get that taken care of? Okay. 
Let's let's talk specifically <coughs> about neighborhood watches because I think we've all, um, you know, driven around and, and seen the the neighborhood watch signs as you enter any particular neighborhood. Um, we don't have probably as many as I would like to see in the Oshkosh area, but um, you know that's one of the reasons we wanted you on to talk about it, and maybe we can boost people's interest in this. Um, but you know what's involved in getting together a neighborhood watch program. Do you have to have a certain number of your neighbors on board with it, I'm assuming, would be the first step, huh? To have a, well, to establish a neighborhood watch program, first of all, anybody who's interested uh, can do a couple of things. One, they can call me at 233-0385, 233-0385, uh, and we'll help them. I mean, that's the easiest thing to do, or call Sergeant Joe Nichols uh, at the police department. Uh, either way, make the contact. Uh, what we are looking for is someone who is interested in being the host okay. of their block, however they define their block. It might be if you stand on your porch and look down the street, it might be all of the houses you can see. Uh, it might be a couple of houses, depending. There, mm -hmm. There's no single answer for this. Uh, and then we invite all of the people who live in that area to come to a meeting. Okay. And at that meeting, we ask everyone to talk through in a very practical, casual way what we want for our neighborhood. Uh, literally, what do we want for our neighborhood? And you know, if everybody says what's on his mind, we get a wonderful picture of the complexity of a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And what my neighborhood might want can be entirely different from what your neighborhood wants. Sure. Because our neighborhoods are different. There's no right, there's no wrong, there's no single pattern uh, that we can see. All we know is that if people care about their neighborhood, they'll get together and they will figure out solutions. You know, our culture is an amazingly practical, competent culture. All we have to do is form a committee and talk about it. Sure. That's what separates America from most of the world. And help give people the tools that they need to, then, to accomplish what they want to absolutely. accomplish. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and the bottom line here, Thatcher, is, you know, neighbors watching out for each other and their property. That's you know? right. Um, and that really can be done in a, in a number of different ways. So, so if, if uh, someone wants to get a neighborhood watch started, they, I'm glad to hear, they don't have to be the ones to go banging on neighbors' doors and, and making that uncomfortable introduction. You guys kind of do that for that person. Well, You invite we are, them to a meeting. We will, we will help. Mm -hmm. uh, as our board has talked through, you know, what is the neighborhood's role and what is our role? We know that as volunteers, we can't do everything for everybody. And yeah. so uh, we, we, we described what we saw as truths, uh, like the sun rises, it's a truth at that level, that only a person who lives in a neighborhood can make that neighborhood better. Uh, because nobody cares about your own neighborhood as much as you do. We can't do it for you, I can't do it for you, nobody can do it for you, but we can help you. Sure. And we will help you, and we will not abandon you. Uh, if there's problems, we will sit down with you and we will figure out a solution to the problem. If we need some resources, we'll figure out a way to get some resources to help. If we don't know what to do, we'll find somebody who does. Sure. So nobody will be, you know, on his or her own in this process of Absolutely. being a block captain. Okay. Uh, the thing that has impressed me uh, about Oshkosh, and I've lived here for about 30 years now, uh, is that throughout this city, on every block, there are so many people who are so able and competent. Uh, we're, 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 a, we're a community of practical problem solvers. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is decide you know, to solve the problem. You know, you look at the Menominee Park uh, playground that mm -hmm. was built yep. over, what, two, three weekends by several hundreds of people, it was. all of whom said, hey, let's get her done. Yep. And so we did.
Yep, we did. And it's a great <coughs> playground, And too. it is a great playground. Um, okay, so, um, you know, you guys then invite people to come to a meeting, and people start sharing ideas and concepts about what they want their neighborhood to be, and then what's the step after that? What happens after that first meeting, that first get-together? The, the neighbors have to make these decisions mm -hmm. as to what they want to do. Uh, if you step back a little bit, and and this is where the neighborhood watch kind of ties into this whole neighbor works thing. Mm -hmm. uh, even though we're separate organizations, uh, you know, we absolutely will cooperate with each other sure. and help each other and try not to duplicate and so forth and so on. Uh, but the goal of both of these organizations ultimately is to have a better neighborhood because we want the value of your house to increase. Good things happen when the value of your house mm -hmm. increases. You can sell it, for example. You can make some money at it, for example. Mm -hmm. For your neighbors, a house that sells to attractive people uh, improves the value and quality of life of a neighborhood. Uh, the reality, however, is that uh, I, I think David Belke put it well when he said, your house is a billboard. Your neighborhood is a billboard. Mm -hmm. What does that billboard say? Does it say, buy here? Or does it say, run away? Well, if your neighborhood says, run away, you have a choice. You can say, well, let's watch everybody run away, or we can figure out what we need to do to make it attractive. And that ties into, can we make the houses look better? Is it neat and tidy? Mm -hmm. uh, if there's junk around, should we neighbors get together on a Saturday and spend three, four hours and pick it up? Mm -hmm. These are all the decisions, however, that the neighbors have to make. Sure. And, you know, ultimately it comes down to it's all our choice. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we make some choices. Can businesses, um, you know, get involved? Because, because crime can strike not just residential areas. It can and does, as we all know, strike business areas. Uh, can businesses have a neighborhood watch? Uh, businesses can have a neighborhood watch. Businesses can join in in any local neighborhood watch. Mm -hmm. Uh, absolutely. Uh, the, the whole logic of people caring for each other and looking out for each other and extra eyes on the street uh, applies you know, to businesses as much as it does to everybody. Businesses are an integral part of our community. Sure. You know, we depend on them for our services and for the things we buy that make life worthwhile. They depend on us to buy them. We all have an interest in keeping up the value of businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's really no end to where we can go uh, with the idea of the power of a neighborhood of people who care. Mm -hmm. uh, and as we and our executive board were talking through all of these ideas and, you know, we generate 30 or 40 different ways of looking at a neighborhood, you know, it always comes down to neighbors knowing each other houses are well maintained and safe neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, <clears throat> you know, getting people involved in this once once you've got a neighborhood watch program in place and you've got the, the you guys still do put up signs in, in yes. the neighborhood. Once the sign is up, um, it the, it can then be whatever that neighborhood again wants it to be. They can have a block party if they want. They can have monthly meetings, if you will, or get-togethers. They they can really run it however they want, right? Well, they they can run it how they want, but more importantly, they have to run it how they like mm -hmm. because this is their block. Mm -hmm. uh, the residents of a neighborhood have to take ownership of their neighborhood mm -hmm. uh, because nobody else, as I said, can do it for them. The city can't do it for them. Congress can't do it for them. I can't do it for them. You can't do it for them. People have to do it for themselves. But there's a lot of help 
so you don't have to learn how to do it on your own. You don't have to reinvent you the don't, wheel. That's right. The wheel is out there. Yep. And now we're still tinkering with it, mind you. We think it's got it almost round, uh, but we'll get there. No sure. question about that. Well, and, you know, and the simple fact of the matter is the police can't be everywhere. You know, they just can't. And so they need as many eyes and ears checking things out as they can possibly get. You know? Well, that is true. And the police have been most helpful and uh, most supportive of this whole neighborhood watch idea. Uh, we developed our sense of what we want from the police independently of uh, the police department. Uh, we had a meeting with Chief Groyle the other day and laid out what we wanted from police. And he looked at that and said, yep, that's what we want from the police too. And what we want from the police is the uh, sergeants in charge of an area, of a police district, to have ownership of that district. When something bad happens, we want them to feel bad. We want them to care about it. We want them to know neighbors. Mm -hmm. We want personal identity so there is trust and you know who to call. And they're very open. You go on the city's website, they'll give you their cell phones. Mm -hmm. You can call up an officer and say, officer, got a question, got a concern. Yep. I mean, the communication is wide open, which is what it should be. Right. Um, and, you know, you're familiar with the email uh, mm -hmm. system that yep. uh, the police yep. report what is going on. And one of the fascinating things, just looking at that, or uh, one is how safe the city is, and two, how much time they spend because of alcohol. Mm -hmm. You know, 97% of their work involves alcohol. Yeah. And that's, you know, just the fact of our Wisconsin culture, good, sure. bad, or indifferent. Yep. Yep. Okay, so um, if people are interested in getting a neighborhood watch going, um, they can contact uh, you at 233-0385. And you said they can also contact Joe Nichols right down at the police department. That is correct. Okay. Either way, well, we talk to each other. Uh, we will get, uh, we will help you organize. Okay. Uh, we will help you organize. We will support you. As I say, we will not abandon you. Uh, part of the board's responsibility as we looked at responsibilities was to say uh, you know our job is not to do the work of a neighborhood but our job is to support the neighborhood our job is to remove obstacles that a neighborhood can't our job is to talk with other agencies our job is to you know do some training and education and kind mm -hmm. of the how to do it stuff uh, if people need things printed up, our job is to get them printed up. Uh, all of this is to make it as easy as possible sure. uh, to get the job done. And uh, so that is our responsibility to do. Okay. It's your responsibility on the block level. We'll support it. But as I say, we can't do it for you. Sure. Well, not to, not to discourage anyone from doing this because we want as many neighborhood watch programs as we can get. But one of the things, if people don't know each other, they may be a little reluctant to even go to a, a little get together. What is the minimum number of people in a neighborhood area that you would need to have a successful watch program? If two people came to the first meeting, you would have the beginning okay. of a successful program. And that's good. That's, it is good that's because good. if two people get together, they can always find a third who can always find a fourth. And it'll grow from and, uh, But by and large, in our town, people have a nodding acquaintance mm -hmm. with people on the block. Uh, you know, it's not like we are complete strangers in a big city. Right. What our experience is, is that if someone just goes around and drops off a flyer and says, hey, come on over, uh, I've got coffee and cookies and let's <laughs> talk about setting up a neighborhood watch, uh, they get 20, 30 percent, 40 percent of the people uh, on the block. Okay. And, uh, you know, so it, it's pretty much all you have to do is is do it. All right, excellent. Well, if you're interested in starting a neighborhood watch, either give uh, the Oshkosh Police Department a call or you can call Thatcher at 233-0385. And that's going to do it for us. Thanks so much for being here. We appreciate it. We will see you next time. Until then, take good care. Keep your eye on us. We've got our eye on Oshkosh.